Not all fertilizers are equal when it comes to houseplants, and often we're doing more harm than good when it comes to our choices. Our main goal when it comes to houseplants is luscious growth and in the odd circumstance, flowering. But improper fertilization does not only lead to burn, it can also result in more pest issues, immobilization of nutrients, leggy plants, moldy soil, gnats for days, and the list goes on. So if you are seemingly suffering from endless floppy leaves, leggy growth, moldy soil, and endless pests, then this video is most definitely for you. But first, I want to say thank you to today's video sponsor, Skillshare. Skillshare is offering an exclusive offer down below for seven days free and 20% off a yearly subscription. You can take one course done by Ashley Essekin on how to grow indoors using soil. But the library over on Skillshare is endless. I've been using it to help me develop better techniques for editing video, helping me actually set up my new audio and camera I have. Yes, I know. It's I feel like a pro now, but Skillshare has helped me with these skills. There's no goal too small when it comes to finding a new hobby or a side hustle using Skillshare's endless library of courses. Plus you have direct contact with the teacher and you're able to show off your final project. And this includes the final project for the indoor growing and what that setup looks like along with what soil and how your plants are doing. This interaction with both the teachers and other classmates is very important when it comes to learning a skill, but actually perfecting it as well. So with that being said, I want to thank Skillshare for sponsoring today's video. And like I said, check out the link in the pinned comment down below for seven days free and 20% off a yearly subscription. I will see you over on Skillshare. So first off, when it comes to fertilizers for house plants, we can look at organic versus synthetic. If you want to avoid pests, you want to avoid mold, or you just want to avoid any sort of creepy crawly, then I would heavily encourage you to avoid organic. Organic systems need need to be alive. They need to be a little mini ecosystem inside your home. The reason for this is because they need to be able to mineralize and mobilize nutrients. And the only way for that to happen is with macro fauna and micro fauna and microbes. So you're going to see creepy crawlies just because if you're using any sort of compost or manure indoors, it's a very natural process that needs to take place. This includes mold. If you're using compost, manures, vermicast, you name it, you need to be open to the idea of mold. Mold is huge, mycelium is huge in the degradation of these materials and turning them into usable products for plants. With that being said, if you want to avoid this entirely, you could go the direction of synthetics. Synthetics will allow you to work more in a sterile soil system, meaning you won't have to look and stare bugs in the eyes, you won't have to look and stare mold in the eyes. And with that being said, they work great in smaller containers for those of you that underwater. When we're working with an organic soil system with potting soil, soil plants, house plants, we really want to make sure that that soil is continually moist. If you notice your plants become bone dry over time, or you allow your plant soils to become bone dry, basically stopping the process of nutrient mobilization, nitrification, uh, the nitrogen cycle, the phosphate cycle, you're stopping it in its tracks every time it becomes dry. With synthetic fertilizers, we don't have to worry about this as much. The only thing I will say is if you allow that soil to become bone dry, I would do a pre-soak, meaning a a couple hour soak in some lukewarm water or room temperature water until that soil system is fully saturated and then go ahead and actually water the plants. Now I personally like a middle ground, meaning I do use synthetics, but I also use a number of different microbes to help me combat other issues. So one thing I do use is insect frass. Also chitin is another version of this. So frass and chitin, two different things. However, they both give a very similar result in our house plant and that is is the equivalent to a vaccine. So when we expose our plant roots to this, the plant believes that there is a bug in its presence. And so it will put up whatever walls need to be put up in order to prevent an infection. So that is one option. I also use like to use Bacillus thuringiensis. Uh, it's called BT. You can buy it in a number of different uh, containers, but regardless, you place that in your soil and that bacteria, while not visible, will help control pests and and other problems inside of that soil system. Then I also would like to use mites and nematodes, both of which again help control pests over time. With that being said, though I use a combination of organic and synthetic fertilizer, and I'm not really biased to which one I choose, but I will say the form that that 
material is in, the fertilizer is in, is going to be key. So let's talk about that next. The form we're looking for is liquid, regardless if it's synthetic or if it's organic. When we speak about soil, we talk about soil solution when it comes to soil scientists. The reason for that is because a solution is how the nutrients uptake in. We need water and we need nutrients dissolved in water. Think of soil that's dry, having nutrients and the soil and the water in all separate compartments. This is the equivalent of before we make the smoothie. Once we make the smoothie, we start up that blender and everything gets blended together in a homogenous drink. We then drink that. The same thing goes for plant roots. We want a homogenous liquid, meaning we need water in its presence. If we deliver that nutrients in a water form, liquid, we tend to get better results than that of a slow release granular or anything else in between like top dressing. The next thing we're gonna look at is the type of houseplant we have. Do we have something that flowers? Do we have a leaf? a green terrestrial plant or do we have an epiphytic plant? If we have a terrestrial plant with root hairs, then we can simply use a peat combined with a compost and again, synthetic fertilizers where needed. If we have an epiphytic plant, we really wanna consider using a combination of foliar application sprays and a liquid fertilizer in a chunky soil mix. The reason for this is because epiphytic plant roots are much different than that of a terrestrial plant root. Terrestrial plant roots have the root hairs, epiphytic plants have more finger-like roots. These finger-like roots are meant to capture nutrients that's ambiently running around in water and absorb through kind of little tiny cells on the side. I did a whole video on this, so I'll get you guys to actually check that out if you wanna learn more. If you have a plant that's going to flower, like a philodendron or a Christmas cactus or a desert rose, all examples of indoor plants that flower, you would wanna consider getting something that has higher levels of calcium and magnesium. Now, while people say, get a bloom formula, it tends to have higher phosphorus and potassium. However, if you are using any sort of myco product or mycelium product, I would actually consider, if you're using a mycorrhizal product, I would back off on the phos. The, anything that contains phos will actually harm your mycelium. So just that's something to keep in mind there. Aim for something, again, that has that calcium and magnesium. And one of the best ways to actually apply this for houseplants is going to be a foliar application and I encourage you to check out my copper video to better understanding of what that would look like. And last up is your soil pH. Soil pH has a huge role when it comes to houseplant fertilizers. Did you know that fertilizer, no matter how much you put on, if it's in the wrong pH, cannot be uptaken by the plant. It ends up locked up in the soil or simply runs right through the soil. So with that being said, if you're choosing to do a DIY home potting soil, I would heavily encourage you to test that soil pH. I can almost guarantee you if you did not use lime but you use coconut coir or peat in that mix you likely will have a more acidic soil where your plant cannot uptake those nutrients in an ideal form now with that being said a simple addition of lime will help correct this or just purchasing potting soil from the store while we think it's inferior it actually does have those additives in it and they do make sure that it is ph neutralized or slightly acidic to help that plant out. So you're probably thinking, okay, that's great, but what are the steps I can take to help ensure that my plant is uptaking fertilizer at an adequate level that will help give me the greatest blooms and the most rapid growth? And I have five steps for you to follow. The first one is having that pH adjusted soil. Whether this be you adding your own lime or purchasing pH adjusted soil from the store, this is going to help enormously. Number two, I want you to mix your liquid or your granular dissolved in water fertilizer 20 minutes prior to fertilizing or watering your plants. And you're going to do this every single time you water. You are going to add fertilizer. I want you to aim for an all purpose and I'll leave a link for some options down below. The reason why we wanna mix this prior to watering, it's, it's going to allow that fertilizer to fully dissolve inside of the water, meaning it's going to be in its most bioavailable state and it's going to be properly dispersed with throughout that watering container. Give it time to do this. If you can leave it overnight, this is an even better situation. Number three, I want you to consider a foliar application for the micronutrients such as copper, zinc, iron, in particular copper. For your epiphytic plants like your orchids, I really want you to consider a foliar application for a majority of the fertilizer it needs. And again, this can come in a micro or a macronutrient format, but again, we want to be misting that plant. Number four, if you're choosing to go for organic, I really 
want you to concentrate on ensuring that that water does not become bone dry. Bone dry potting soil means that the, the nitrogen cycle, the phosphate cycle, whatever it is, has been stopped in its tracks. Try to avoid this whenever possible to help keep that little microbe ecosystem going throughout the entire growth of that plant's life. And number five, I want you to fertilize every single time you water, and I want you to water with slightly acidic water, meaning at that six to 6.5 range. If you're in Saskatchewan, you, I can tell you, your water is at an eight, so you may wanna use some pH down. And for anyone else in the world, if you could let me know in the comments down below what your pH is at approximately, because it's going to help people out in your own city. So with that being said, I hope this video helps you guys understand what it takes to fertilize your houseplants, and I will talk to you guys next time.